The Julian calendar, proposed by Julius Caesar in 46 BC 708 AUC, was a reform of the Roman calendar. It took effect on 1 January 45 BC AUC 709, by edict. It was the predominant calendar in the Roman world, most of Europe, and in European settlements in the Americas and elsewhere, until it was refined and gradually replaced by the Gregorian calendar, promulgated in 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII. The Julian calendar is still used in parts of the Eastern Orthodox Church, in parts of Oriental Orthodoxy, and by the Berbers see below. During the 20th and 21st centuries, the date according to the Julian calendar is 13 days behind the Gregorian date, and after 2100 the disparity will widen. <laughs> year length, leap years The Julian calendar has two types of year, normal, years of 365 days and leap, years of 366 days. There is a simple cycle of three normal years followed by a leap year and this pattern repeats forever without exception. The Julian year is, therefore, on average 365.25 days long. Consequently the Julian year drifts over time with respect to the tropical solar year 365.24217 days, although Greek astronomers had known, at least since Hipparchus, a century before the Julian reform, that the tropical year was slightly shorter than 365.25 days, the calendar did not compensate for this difference. As a result, the calendar year gains about three days every four centuries compared to observed equinox times and the seasons. This discrepancy was largely corrected by the Gregorian reform of 1582. The Gregorian calendar has the same months and month lengths as the Julian calendar, but, in the Gregorian calendar, year numbers evenly divisible by 100 are not leap years, except that those evenly divisible by 400 remain leap years. Even then, the Gregorian calendar diverges from astronomical observations by one day in 3,030 years. The difference in the average length of the year between Julian (365.25 days) and Gregorian (365.2425 days) is 0.002%, making the Julian 10.8 minutes longer. The accumulated effect of this difference over some 1,600 years since the basis for calculation of the date of Easter was determined at the First Council of Nicaea means for example that, from 16 February Julian the 1st of March Gregorian 1900 and until 15 February Julian the 28th of February Gregorian 2100, Julian is 13 days behind Gregorian, bearing in mind that 1900 and 2100 are leap years in the Julian system but not in the Gregorian. Topic. Table of months Topic. Topic. Motivation for Caesar's reform Topic. The ordinary year in the previous Roman calendar consisted of 12 months, for a total of 355 days. In addition, a 27- or 28-day intercalary month, the mensis intercalaris, was sometimes inserted between February and March. This intercalary month was formed by inserting 22 or 23 days after the first 23 days of February. The last five days of February, which counted down toward the start of March, became the last five days of intercalaris. The net effect was to add 22 or 23 days to the year, forming an intercalary year of 377 or 378 days. Some say the mensis intercalaris always had 27 days and began on either the first or the second day after the terminalia the 23rd of February. According to the later writers Sensorinus and Macrobius, the ideal intercalary cycle consisted of ordinary years of 355 days alternating with intercalary years, alternately 377 and 378 days long. In this system, the average Roman year would have had 366 and a quarter days over four years, giving it an average drift of one day per year relative to any solstice or equinox. Macrobius describes a further refinement whereby, in one eight-year period within a 24-year cycle, there were only three intercalary years, each of 377 days thus 11 intercalary years out of 24. This refinement averages the length of the year to 365.25 days over 24 years. 
In practice, intercalations did not occur systematically according to any of these ideal systems, but were determined by the pontifices. So far as can be determined from the historical evidence, they were much less regular than these ideal schemes suggest. They usually occurred every second or third year, but were sometimes omitted for much longer, and occasionally occurred in two consecutive years. If managed correctly this system could have allowed the Roman year to stay roughly aligned to a tropical year. However, since the pontifices were often politicians, and because a Roman magistrate's term of office corresponded with a calendar year, this power was prone to abuse. A pontifex could lengthen a year in which he or one of his political allies was in office, or refuse to lengthen one in which his opponents were in power. If too many intercalations were omitted, as happened after the Second Punic War and during the Civil Wars, the calendar would drift out of alignment with the tropical year. Moreover, because intercalations were often determined quite late, the average Roman citizen often did not know the date, particularly if he were some distance from the city. For these reasons, the last years of the pre-Julian calendar were later known as «years of confusion». The problems became particularly acute during the years of Julius Caesar. S. Pontificate before the reform, 63 to 46 BC, when there were only five intercalary months instead of eight, none of which were during the five Roman years before 46 BC. Caesar's reform was intended to solve this problem permanently by creating a calendar that remained aligned to the sun without any human intervention. This proved useful very soon after the new calendar came into effect. Varro used it in 37 BC to fix calendar dates for the start of the Four Seasons, which would have been impossible only eight years earlier. A century later, when Pliny dated the winter solstice to 25 December because the Sun entered the eighth degree of Capricorn on that date, this stability had become an ordinary fact of life. Topic. Context of the reform Topic. Although the approximation of 365 and a quarter days for the tropical year had been known for a long time ancient solar calendars had used less precise periods, resulting in gradual misalignment of the calendar with the seasons. The Octodurus, a cycle of eight lunar years popularized by Cleostratus and also commonly attributed to Eudoxus which was used in some early Greek calendars, notably in Athens, is 1.53 days longer than eight Julian years. The length of 19 years in the cycle of Metan was 6,940 days, six hours longer than the mean Julian year. The mean Julian year was the basis of the 76-year cycle devised by Callippus a student under Eudoxus to improve the Metonic cycle. In Persia Iran, after the reform in the Persian calendar by introduction of the Persian Zoroastrian i.e. Young Avestan calendar in 503 BC and afterwards, the first day of the year one Farverdin equals Nauruz slipped against the vernal equinox at the rate of approximately one day every four years. Likewise in the Egyptian calendar, a fixed year of 365 days was in use, drifting by one day against the sun in four years. An unsuccessful attempt to add an extra day every fourth year was made in 238 BC decree of Canopus. Caesar probably experienced this wandering or vague calendar in that country. He landed in the Nile Delta in October 48 BC and soon became embroiled in the Ptolemaic dynastic war, especially after Cleopatra managed to be introduced to him in Alexandria. Caesar imposed a peace, and a banquet was held to celebrate the event. Lucan depicted Caesar talking to a wise man called Achorus during the feast, stating his intention to create a calendar more perfect than that of Eudoxus. Eudoxus was popularly credited with having determined the length of the year to be 365 and a quarter days. But the war soon resumed and Caesar was attacked by the Egyptian army for several months until he achieved victory. He then enjoyed a long cruise on the Nile with Cleopatra before leaving the country in June 47 BC. Caesar returned to Rome in 46 BC and, according to Plutarch, called in the best philosophers and mathematicians of his time to solve the problem of the calendar. Pliny says that Caesar was aided in his reform by the astronomer Sosagenes of Alexandria who is generally considered the principal designer of the reform. Sosagenes may also have been the author of the astronomical almanac published by Caesar to facilitate the reform. Eventually, it was decided to establish a calendar that would be a combination between the old Roman months, the fixed length of the Egyptian calendar, and the 365 and a quarter days of the Greek astronomy. 
According to Macrobius, Caesar was assisted in this by a certain Marcus Flavius. <inaudible> Julian reform <inaudible> Realignment of the year the first step of the reform was to realign the start of the calendar year, the 1st of January, to the tropical year by making 46 BC, 708 AUC, 445 days long, compensating for the intercalations which had been missed during Caesar's pontificate. This year had already been extended from 355 to 378 days by the insertion of a regular intercalary month in February. When Caesar decreed the reform, probably shortly after his return from the African campaign in late Quintilis July, he added 67 more days by inserting two extraordinary intercalary months between November and December. These months are called intercalaris prior and intercalaris posterior in letters of Cicero written at the time. There is no basis for the statement sometimes seen that they were called undecember and duodecember, terms that arose in the 18th century over a millennium millennium after the Roman Empire's collapse. Their individual lengths are unknown, as is the position of the nuns and ides within them, because 46 BC was the last of a series of irregular years, this extra long year was, and is, referred to as the last year of confusion. The new calendar began operation after the realignment had been completed, in 45 BC. <laughs> Changes to the months Topic. The Julian months were formed by adding 10 days to a regular pre-Julian Roman year of 355 days, creating a regular Julian year of 365 days. Two extra days were added to January, Sextilis August, and December, and one extra day was added to April, June, September and November. February was not changed in ordinary years, and so continued to be the traditional 28 days. Thus, the ordinary i.e., non-leap year lengths of all of the months were set by the Julian calendar to the same values they still hold today. See Sacrobosco's theory on month lengths below for stories purporting otherwise. The Julian reform did not change the method used to account days of the month in the pre-Julian calendar, based on the calends, nuns and ides, nor did it change the positions of these three dates within the months. Macrobius states that the extra days were added immediately before the last day of each month to avoid disturbing the position of the established religious ceremonies relative to the nuns and ides of the month. However, since Roman dates after the ides of the month counted down toward the start of the next month, the extra days had the effect of raising the initial value of the count of the day following the ides in the lengthened months. Thus, in January, Sextilis and December the 14th day of the month became a, d, 19 cal, instead of a, d, 17 cal, while in April, June, September and November it became a, d, 18 cal. Romans of the time born after the Ides of a month responded differently to the effect of this change on their birthdays. Mark Antony kept his birthday on 14 January, which changed its date from a, d, 17 cal. February to a, d, 19 cal. February, a date that had previously not existed. Livia kept the date of her birthday unchanged at a, d, 3 cal. Feb, which moved it from 28 to 30 January, a day that had previously not existed. Augustus kept his on 23 September, but both the old date a, d, 8 cal. October and the new a, d, x cal. October were celebrated in some places. The inserted days were all initially characterized as dies fasti f. See Roman calendar. The character of a few festival days was changed. In the early Julio-Claudian period a large number of festivals were decreed to celebrate events of dynastic importance, which caused the character of the associated dates to be changed to NP. However, this practice was discontinued around the reign of Claudius, and the practice of characterizing days fell into disuse around the end of the 1st century AD. The Antonin jurist Gaius speaks of dies nefasti as a thing of the past. Topic. Intercalation Topic. The old intercalary month was abolished. The new leap day was dated as anti diem bis sextum calendas marches the sixth doubled day before the calends of March, usually abbreviated as a, d, bis v cal. 
Mart, hence it is called in English the bisextile day. The year in which it occurred was termed Annus bisextus, in English the bisextile year. There is debate about the exact position of the bisextile day in the early Julian calendar. The earliest direct evidence is a statement of the 2nd century jurist Celsus, who states that there were two halves of a 48 hour day, and that the intercalated day was the posterior half. An inscription from AD 168 states that A. D. V. Cal. Mart. was the day after the bisextile day. The 19th century chronologist Idler argued that Celsus used the term posterior in a technical fashion to refer to the earlier of the two days, which requires the inscription to refer to the whole 48-hour day as the bisextile. Some later historians share this view. Others, following Momsen, take the view that Celsus was using the ordinary Latin and English meaning of posterior. A third view is that neither half of the 48-hour bisextum was originally formally designated as intercalated, but that the need to do so arose as the concept of a 48 hour day became obsolete. There is no doubt that the bisextile day eventually became the earlier of the two days for most purposes. In 238, Censorinus stated that it was inserted after the Terminalia the 23rd of February and was followed by the last five days of February, i.e., A, D, V, V, I, V, 3 and Prid. Cal, Mart, which would be 24 to 28 February in a common year and 25 to 29 in a leap year. Hence he regarded the bisextum as the first half of the doubled day. All later writers, including Macrobius about 430, Bede in 725, and other medieval computists calculators of Easter followed this rule, as does the liturgical calendar of the Roman Catholic Church. However, Celsus' definition continued to be used for legal purposes. It was incorporated into Justinian's Digest, and in the English statute de anno et di bisextili of 1236, which was not formally repealed until 1879. The effect of the bisextile day on the nundinal cycle is not discussed in the sources. According to Dio Cassius, a leap day was inserted in 41 BC to ensure that the first market day of 40 BC did not fall on 1 January, which implies that the old eight-day cycle was not immediately affected by the Julian reform. However, he also reports that in AD 44, and on some previous occasions, the market day was changed to avoid a conflict with a religious festival. This may indicate that a single nundinal letter was assigned to both halves of the 48-hour bisextile day by this time, so that the regifugium and the market day might fall on the same date but on different days. In any case, the eight-day nundinal cycle began to be displaced by the seven-day week in the first century AD, and dominical letters began to appear alongside nundinal letters in the fasti. During the late Middle Ages days in the month came to be numbered in consecutive day order. Consequently, the leap day was considered to be the last day in February in leap years, i.e., the 29th of February, which is its current position. Topic: <laughs> Sacrobosco's theory on month lengths. Topic: The Julian reform set the lengths of the months to their modern values. However, a 13th-century scholar, Sacrobosco, proposed a different explanation for the lengths of Julian months which is still widely repeated but is certainly wrong. According to Sacrobosco, the month lengths for ordinary years in the Roman Republican calendar, from January to December, were 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, 29, 30, 29. Sacrobosco then thought that Julius Caesar added one day to every month except February, a total of 11 more days to regular months, giving the ordinary Julian year of 365 days. A single leap day could now be added to this extra short February. 31, 29 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30. He then said Augustus changed this, by taking one day from February to add it to Sextilis, and then modifying the alternation of the following months, to 31, 28 29, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31, 30, 31 so that the length of Augustus August would not be shorter than and therefore inferior to the length of Julius July, giving us the irregular month lengths which are still in use. There is abundant evidence disproving this theory. 
First, a wall painting of a Roman calendar predating the Julian reform has survived, which confirms the literary accounts that the months were already irregular before Julius Caesar reformed them, with an ordinary year of 355 days, not 354, with month lengths arranged as 29, 28, 31, 29, 31, 29, 31, 29, 29, 31, 29, 29. Also, the Julian reform did not change the dates of the nuns and ides. In particular, the Ides were late on the 15th rather than 13th in March, May, July and October, showing that these months always had 31 days in the Roman calendar, whereas Sacrobosco's theory requires that March, May and July were originally 30 days long and that the length of October was changed from 29 to 30 days by Caesar and to 31 days by Augustus. Further, Sacrobosco S theory is explicitly contradicted by the 3rd and 5th century authors Censorinus and Macrobius, and it is inconsistent with seasonal lengths given by Varro, writing in 37 BC, before Sextilus was renamed for Augustus in 8 BC, with the 31-day Sextilus given by an Egyptian papyrus from 24 BC, and with the 28-day February shown in the Fasti Caritani, which is dated before 12 BC. Topic: Adoption of the Julian calendar. Topic. Caesar's reform only applied to the Roman calendar. However, in the following decades many of the local civic and provincial calendars of the empire and neighboring client kingdoms were aligned to the Julian calendar by transforming them into calendars with years of 365 days with an extra day intercalated every four years. The reformed calendars typically retained many features of the unreformed calendars. In many cases, the new year was not on 1 January, the leap day was not on the bisextile day, the old month names were retained, the lengths of the reformed months did not match the lengths of Julian months, and, even if they did, their first days did not match the first day of the corresponding Julian month. Nevertheless, since the reformed calendars had fixed relationships to each other and to the Julian calendar, the process of converting dates between them became quite straightforward, through the use of conversion tables known as hemorrhologia. Several of the reformed calendars are only known through surviving hemorrhologia. The three most important of these calendars are the Alexandrian calendar, the Asian calendar and the Syro-Macedonian calendar. Other reformed calendars are known from Cappadocia, Cyprus and the cities of Syria and Palestine. Most reformed calendars were adopted under Augustus, though the calendar of Nabatea was reformed after the kingdom became the Roman province of Arabia in AD 106. There is no evidence that local calendars were aligned to the Julian calendar in the Western Empire. Unreformed calendars continued to be used in Gaul, Greece, Macedon, the Balkans and parts of Palestine, most notably in Judea. The Alexandrian calendar adapted the Egyptian calendar by adding a sixth epigominal day as the last day of the year in every fourth year, falling on 29 August preceding a Julian bisextile day. It was otherwise identical to the Egyptian calendar. The first leap day was in 22 BC, and they occurred every four years from the beginning, even though Roman leap days occurred every three years at this time see leap year error. This calendar influenced the structure of several other reformed calendars, such as those of the cities of Gaza and Ascalon in Palestine, Salamis in Cyprus, and the province of Arabia. It was adopted by the Coptic Church and remains in use both as the liturgical calendar of the Coptic Church and as the civil calendar of Ethiopia. The Asian calendar was an adaptation of the Macedonian calendar used in the province of Asia and, with minor variations, in nearby cities and provinces. It is known in detail through the survival of decrees promulgating it issued in 8 BC by the proconsul Paulus Fabius Maximus. It renamed the first month Dios as Kaiser, and arranged the months such that each month started on the ninth day before the calends of the corresponding Roman month, thus the year began on 23 September, Augustus' birthday. Since Greek months typically had 29 or 30 days, the extra day of 31-day months was named Sebaste—the emperor's day—and was the first day of these months. The leap day was a second Sebaste day in the month of Zandikos, i.e., 24 February. This calendar remained in use at least until the middle of the 5th century AD. The Syro-Macedonian calendar was an adaptation of the Macedonian calendar used in Antioch and other parts of Syria. The months were exactly aligned to the Julian calendar, but they retained their Macedonian names and the year began in Dios. 
Topic. November until the 5th century, when the start of the year was moved to Gorpios. Topic September. These reformed calendars generally remained in use until the 5th or 6th century. Around that time most of them were replaced as civil calendars by the Julian calendar, but with a year starting in September to reflect the year of the indiction cycle. The Julian calendar spread beyond the borders of the Roman Empire through its use as the Christian liturgical calendar. When a people or a country was converted to Christianity, they generally also adopted the Christian calendar of the church responsible for conversion. Thus, Christian Nubia and Ethiopia adopted the Alexandrian calendar, while Christian Europe adopted the Julian calendar, in either the Catholic or Orthodox variant. Starting in the 16th century, European settlements in the Americas and elsewhere likewise inherited the Julian calendar of the mother country, until they adopted the Gregorian reform. The last country to adopt the Julian calendar was the Ottoman Empire, which used it for financial purposes for some time under the name Rumi calendar and dropped the escape years, which tied it to Muslim chronology in 1840. <laughs> Leap year error Although the new calendar was much simpler than the pre-Julian calendar, the pontifices initially added a leap day every three years, instead of every four. There are accounts of this in Solanus, Pliny, Ammianus, Suetonius, and Censorinus. Macrobius gives the following account of the introduction of the Julian calendar. Caesar's regulation of the civil year to accord with his revised measurement was proclaimed publicly by edict, and the arrangement might have continued to stand had not the correction itself of the calendar led the priests to introduce a new error of their own, for they proceeded to insert the intercalary day, which represented the four quarter days, at the beginning of each fourth year instead of at its end, although the intercalation ought to have been made at the end of each fourth year and before the beginning of the fifth. This error continued for 36 years by which time 12 intercalary days had been inserted instead of the number actually due, namely 9. But when this error was at length recognized, it too was corrected, by an order of Augustus, that 12 years should be allowed to pass without an intercalary day, since the sequence of 12 such years would account for the three days which, in the course of 36 years, had been introduced by the premature actions of the priests. So, according to Macrobius, the year was considered to begin after the Terminalia, the 23rd of February. The calendar was operated correctly from its introduction on the 1st of January 45 BC until the beginning of the fourth year, February 42 BC, at which point the priests inserted the first intercalation. Caesar's intention was to make the first intercalation at the beginning of the fifth year, February 41 BC. The priests made a further 11 intercalations after 42 BC at three-year intervals so that the twelfth intercalation fell in 9 BC. Had Caesar's intention been followed there would have been intercalations every four years after 41 BC, so that the ninth intercalation would have been in 9 BC. After 9 BC, there were 12 years without leap years, so that the leap days Caesar would have had in 5 BC, 1 BC and AD 4 were omitted and after AD 4 the calendar was operated as Caesar intended, so that the next leap year was AD 8 and then leap years followed every fourth year thereafter. Some people have had different ideas as to how the leap years went. The above scheme is that of Scaliger in the table below. He established that the Augustan reform was instituted in 8 BC. The table shows for each reconstruction the implied proleptic Julian date for the first day of Caesar's reformed calendar Cal. Ian. AUC 709 and the first Julian date on which the Roman calendar date matches the Julian calendar after the completion of Augustus. Reform Alexander Jones claims that the correct Julian calendar was in use in Egypt in 24 BC, implying that the first day of the reform in both Egypt and Rome, 1 January 45 BC, was the Julian date 1 January if 45 BC was a leap year and 2 January if it was not. This necessitates 14 leap days up to and including AD 8 if 45 BC was a leap year and 13 if it was not. Pierre Brind Amour argued that only one day was intercalated between 1 January 45 and 1 January 40 disregarding a momentary fiddling in December of 41 to avoid the nundinum falling on Cal. Ian 
In 1999, a papyrus was discovered which gives the dates of astronomical phenomena in 24 BC in both the Egyptian and Roman calendars. From 30 August 26 BC Julian, Egypt had two calendars, the Old Egyptian in which every year had 365 days and the New Alexandrian in which every fourth year had 366 days. Up to 28 August 22 BC Julian, the date in both calendars was the same. The dates in the Alexandrian and Julian calendars are in one-to-one -one correspondence except for the period from 29 August in the year preceding a Julian leap year to the following 24 February. From a comparison of the astronomical data with the Egyptian and Roman dates, Alexander Jones concluded that the Egyptian astronomers as opposed to travelers from Rome used the correct Julian calendar. An inscription has been discovered which orders a new calendar to be used in Asia to replace the previous Greek lunar calendar. According to one translation, Intercalation shall commence on the day after 14 Paritius a. D. X Cal. February, which would have been 15 Paritius as it is currently constituted in the third year following promulgation of the decree. Xanthicus shall have 32 days in this intercalary year. This is historically correct. It was decreed by the proconsul that the first day of the year in the new calendar shall be Augustus' birthday, A. D. X. Cal. October every month begins on the ninth day before the calends. The date of introduction, the day after 14 Paritius, was one distress, the next month. The month after that was Xanthicus. Thus Xanthicus began on A. D. X. Cal. Mart, and normally contained 31 days. In leap year, however, it contained an extra. Sebaste day the Roman leap day, and thus had 32 days. From the lunar nature of the old calendar we can fix the starting date of the new one as 24 January, A. D. X. Cal. February 5 BC in the Julian calendar, which was a leap year. Thus from inception the dates of the reformed Asian calendar are in one-to-one -one correspondence with the Julian. Another translation of this inscription is, Intercalation shall commence on the day after the fourteenth day in the current month of Paritius A. D. X. Cal. February, occurring every third year. Xanthicus shall have thirty-two days in this intercalary year. This would move the starting date back three years to 8 BC, and from the lunar synchronism back to the 26th of January Julian. But since the corresponding Roman date in the inscription is 24 January, this must be according to the incorrect calendar which in 8 BC Augustus had ordered to be corrected by the omission of leap days. As the authors of the previous paper point out, with the correct four-year cycle being used in Egypt and the three-year cycle abolished in Rome it is unlikely that Augustus would have ordered the three-year cycle to be introduced in Asia. Topic. Month names. Topic. The Julian reform did not immediately cause the names of any months to be changed. The old intercalary month was abolished and replaced with a single intercalary day at the same point i.e., five days before the end of February. January continued to be the first month of the year. The Romans later renamed months after Julius Caesar and Augustus, renaming Quintilus as Julius July in 44 BC and Sextilus as Augustus. August in 8 BC. Quintilus was renamed to honor Caesar because it was the month of his birth. According to a Senatus Consultum quoted by Macrobius, Sextilus was renamed to honor Augustus because several of the most significant events in his rise to power, culminating in the fall of Alexandria, occurred in that month. Other months were renamed by other emperors, but apparently none of the later changes survived their deaths. In AD 37, Caligula renamed September as Germanicus. After his father, in AD 65, Nero renamed April as Neronius, May as Claudius, and June as Germanicus, and in AD 84 Domitian renamed September as Germanicus, and October as Domitianus. Commodus was unique in renaming all twelve months after his own adopted names January to December, Amazonius, Invictus, Felix, Pius, Lucius. Aelius, Aurelius, Commodus, Augustus, Herculius, Romanus, and Exoperatorius. 
The Emperor Tacitus is said to have ordered that September, the month of his birth and accession, be renamed after him, but the story is doubtful since he did not become emperor before November 275. Similar honorific month names were implemented in many of the provincial calendars that were aligned to the Julian calendar. Other name changes were proposed but were never implemented. Tiberius rejected a senatorial proposal to rename September as Tiberius and October as Livius after his mother Livia. Antoninus Pius rejected a senatorial decree renaming September as Antoninus and November as Faustina. After his empress, much more lasting than the ephemeral month names of the post-Augustan Roman emperors were the old High German names introduced by Charlemagne. According to his biographer, Charlemagne renamed all of the months agriculturally into German. These names were used until the 15th century, over 700 years after his rule, and continued, with some modifications, to see some use as traditional month names until the late 18th century. The names January to December were, Wintermanneth. Winter month, Horning, Lentzenmanneth, Spring month, Lent month, Ostarmanneth, Easter month, Wanamanneth, Joy month, a corruption of Winamanneth, Pasture month, Brockmanoth, Fallow month, Hueymanneth, Hay month, Aranmanneth, Reaping month, Widamanneth, Wood month, Windamaymanneth, Vintage month, Herbistmanneth, Harvest month, and Hylagmanoth, Holy month. The calendar month names used in Western and Northern Europe, in Byzantium, and by the Berbers, were derived from the Latin names. However, in Eastern Europe older seasonal month names continued to be used into the 19th century, and in some cases are still in use, in many languages, including, Belarusian, Bulgarian, Croatian, Czech, Finnish, Georgian, Lithuanian, Macedonian, Polish, Romanian, Slovene, Ukrainian. When the Ottoman Empire adopted the Julian calendar, in the form of the Rumi calendar, the month names reflected Ottoman tradition. <laughs> Year numbering the principal method used by the Romans to identify a year for dating purposes was to name it after the two consuls who took office in it, the eponymous period in question being the consular year. Beginning in 153 BC, consuls began to take office on 1 January, thus synchronizing the commencement of the consular and calendar years. The calendar year has begun in January and ended in December since about 450 BC according to Ovid or since about 713 BC according to Macrobius and Plutarch see Roman calendar. Julius Caesar did not change the beginning of either the consular year or the calendar year. In addition to consular years, the Romans sometimes used the regnal year of the emperor, and by the late 4th century documents were also being dated according to the 15-year cycle of the indiction. In 537, Justinian required that henceforth the date must include the name of the emperor and his regnal year, in addition to the indiction and the consul, while also allowing the use of local eras. In 309 and 310, and from time to time thereafter, no consuls were appointed. When this happened, the consular date was given a count of years since the last consul so-called post-consular dating. After 541, only the reigning emperor held the consulate, typically for only one year in his reign, and so post-consular dating became the norm. Similar post-consular dates were also known in the West in the early 6th century. The system of consular dating, long obsolete, was formally abolished in the Law Code of Leo VI, issued in 888. Only rarely did the Romans number the year from the founding of the city of Rome, Ab Urba Candida AUC. This method was used by Roman historians to determine the number of years from one event to another, not to date a year. Different historians had several different dates for the founding. The Fasti Capitolini, an inscription containing an official list of the consuls which was published by Augustus, used an epoch of 752 BC. The epic used by Varro, 753 BC, has been adopted by modern historians. Indeed, Renaissance editors often added it to the manuscripts that they published, giving the false impression that the Romans numbered their years. Most modern historians tacitly assume that it began on the day the consuls took office, and ancient documents such as the Fasti Capitolini which use other AUC systems do so in the same way. 
However, Censorinus, writing in the 3rd century AD, states that, in his time, the AUC year began with the Perilia, celebrated on 21 April, which was regarded as the actual anniversary of the foundation of Rome. Many local eras, such as the era of Actium and the Spanish era, were adopted for the Julian calendar or its local equivalent in the provinces and cities of the Roman Empire. Some of these were used for a considerable time. Perhaps the best known is the Era of Martyrs, sometimes also called Anno Diocletiani after Diocletian, which was associated with the Alexandrian calendar and often used by the Alexandrian Christians to number their Easters during the 4th and 5th centuries, and continues to be used by the Coptic and Ethiopian churches. In the Eastern Mediterranean, the efforts of Christian chronographers such as Anianus of Alexandria to date the biblical creation of the world led to the introduction of Anno Mundi eras based on this event. The most important of these was the Aetis Cosmo, used throughout the Byzantine world from the 10th century and in Russia until 1700. In the West, the kingdoms succeeding the empire initially used indictions and regnal years, alone or in combination. The chronicler Prosper of Aquitaine, in the 5th century, used an era dated from the Passion of Christ, but this era was not widely adopted. Dionysus Exiguus proposed the system of Anno Domini in 525. This era gradually spread through the Western Christian world, once the system was adopted by Bede in the 8th century. The Julian calendar was also used in some Muslim countries. The Rumi calendar, the Julian calendar used in the later years of the Ottoman Empire, adopted an era derived from the lunar A year equivalent to AD 1840, i.e., the effective Rumi epoch was AD 585. In recent years, some users of the Berber calendar have adopted an era starting in 950 BC, the approximate date that the Libyan pharaoh Sheshonk I came to power in Egypt. <laughs> New Year's Day The Roman calendar began the year on 1 January, and this remained the start of the year after the Julian reform. However, even after local calendars were aligned to the Julian calendar, they started the new year on different dates. The Alexandrian calendar in Egypt started on 29 August, of August after an Alexandrian leap year. Several local provincial calendars were aligned to start on the birthday of Augustus, 23 September. The indiction caused the Byzantine year, which used the Julian calendar, to begin on 1 September. This date is still used in the Eastern Orthodox Church for the beginning of the liturgical year. When the Julian calendar was adopted in AD 988 by Vladimir I of Kiev, the year was numbered Anno Mundi 6496, beginning on 1 March, six months after the start of the Byzantine Anno Mundi year with the same number. In 1492, AM 7000, Ivan III, according to church tradition, realigned the start of the year to the 1st of September, so that AM 7000 only lasted for six months in Russia, from the 1st of March to the 31st of August 1492. During the Middle Ages, the 1st of January retained the name New Year's Day, or an equivalent name, in all Western European countries affiliated with the Roman Catholic Church. Since the medieval calendar continued to display the months from January to December in 12 columns, con containing 28 to 31 days each, just as the Romans had. However, most of those countries began their numbered year on 25 December the Nativity of Jesus, 25 March the Incarnation of Jesus, or even Easter, as in France see the liturgical year article for more details. In Anglo-Saxon England, the year most commonly began on 25 December, which, as approximately the winter solstice, had marked the start of the year in pagan times, though 25 March the equinox is occasionally documented in the 11th century. Sometimes the start of the year was reckoned as 24 September, the start of the so-called Western indiction, introduced by Bede. These practices changed after the Norman conquest. From 1087 to 1155 the English year began on 1 January, and from 1155 to 1751 began on 25 March. In 1752 it was moved back to 1 January, see Calendar New Style Act 1750. Even before 1752, 1 January was sometimes treated as the start of the new year, for example by Pepys, while the year starting 25 March was called the civil or legal year. To reduce misunderstandings on the date, it was not uncommon for a date between 1 January and 24 March to be written as 1661 60 seconds. 
This was to explain to the reader that the year was 1661 counting from March and 1662 counting from January as the start of the year. For more detail, see dual dating. Most Western European countries shifted the first day of their numbered year to the 1st of January while they were still using the Julian calendar, before they adopted the Gregorian calendar, many during the 16th century. The following table shows the years in which various countries adopted the 1st of January as the start of the year. Eastern European countries, with populations showing allegiance to the Orthodox Church, began the year on 1 September from about 988. The Rumi calendar used in the Ottoman Empire began the civil year on 1 March until 1918. Topic. Replacement by the Gregorian calendar Topic. The Julian calendar has been replaced as the civil calendar by the Gregorian calendar in all countries which officially used it. An analogue, the Alexandrian calendar, is the basis for the Ethiopian calendar, which is the civil calendar of Ethiopia. Egypt converted on 20 December 1874 over 1 January 1875. Turkey switched for fiscal purposes on 16 February, 1 March 1917. Russia changed on 1 14 February 1918. Greece made the change for civil purposes on 16 February, 1 March 1923, but the next national day, 25 March, a religious holiday, took place as if on the old calendar. Most Christian denominations in the West and areas evangelized by Western churches have made the same change for their liturgical calendars. During the changeover between calendars and for some time afterwards, dual dating was used in documents and gave the date according to both systems. In contemporary as well as modern texts that describe events during the period of change, it is customary to clarify to which calendar a given date refers by using an OS or NS suffix denoting Old Style, Julian or New Style, Gregorian. Topic. Transition history Topic. The Julian calendar was in general use in Europe and northern Africa until 1582, when Pope Gregory XIII promulgated the Gregorian calendar. Reform was required because too many leap days are added with respect to the astronomical seasons on the Julian scheme. On average, the astronomical solstices and the equinoxes advance by 10.8 minutes per year against the Julian year. As a result, the calculated date of Easter gradually moved out of alignment with the March equinox. While Hipparchus and presumably Sosagenes were aware of the discrepancy, although not of its correct value, it was evidently felt to be of little importance at the time of the Julian reform. However, it accumulated significantly over time, the Julian calendar gained a day about every 134 years. By 1582, it was ten days out of alignment from where it supposedly had been in 325 during the Council of Nicaea. The Gregorian calendar was soon adopted by most Catholic countries e.g., Spain, Portugal, Poland, most of Italy. Protestant countries followed later, and some countries of Eastern Europe even later. In the British Empire including the American colonies, Wednesday 2 September 1752 was followed by Thursday 14 September 1752. For 12 years from 1700 Sweden used a modified Julian calendar, and adopted the Gregorian calendar in 1753. Since the Julian and Gregorian calendars were long used simultaneously, although in different places, calendar dates in the transition period are often ambiguous, unless it is specified which calendar was being used. In some circumstances, double dates might be used, one in each calendar. The notation, old style, OS is sometimes used to indicate a date in the Julian calendar, as opposed to new style. NS, which either represents the Julian date with the start of the year as the 1st of January or a full mapping onto the Gregorian calendar. This notation is used to clarify dates from countries which continued to use the Julian calendar after the Gregorian reform, such as Great Britain, which did not switch to the reformed calendar until 1752, or Russia, which did not switch until 1918. This is why the Russian Revolution of 7 November 1917 NS is known as the October Revolution, because it began on 25 October OS. Throughout the long transition period, the Julian calendar has continued to diverge from the Gregorian. 
This has happened in whole day steps, as leap days which were dropped in certain centennial years in the Gregorian calendar continued to be present in the Julian calendar. Thus, in the year 1700 the difference increased to 11 days, in 1800, 12, and in 1900, 13. Since 2000 was a leap year according to both the Julian and Gregorian calendars, the difference of 13 days did not change in that year. The 29th of February 2000 Gregorian fell on the 16th of February 2000 Julian. This difference will persist until the last day of February 2100 Gregorian, since 2100 is not a Gregorian leap year, but is a Julian leap year. Monday the 1st of March 2100 Gregorian falls on Monday the 16th of February 2100 Julian Topic Eastern Orthodox usage Topic Although most Eastern Orthodox countries most of them in Eastern or Southeastern Europe had adopted the Gregorian calendar by 1924 their national churches had not The Revised Julian calendar was endorsed by a synod in Constantinople in May 1923, consisting of a solar part which was and will be identical to the Gregorian calendar until the year 2800, and a lunar part which calculated Easter astronomically at Jerusalem. All Orthodox churches refused to accept the lunar part, so almost all Orthodox churches continued to celebrate Easter according to the Julian calendar, with the exception of the Estonian Orthodox Church. And the Finnish Orthodox Church, the solar part of the revised Julian calendar was accepted by only some Orthodox churches. Those that did accept it, with hope for improved dialogue and negotiations with the Western denominations, were the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople, the Patriarchates of Alexandria, Antioch, the Orthodox Churches of Greece, Cyprus, Romania, Poland from 1924 to 2014, it is still permitted to use the revised Julian calendar in parishes that want it, Bulgaria in 1963, and the Orthodox Church in America although some OCA parishes are permitted to use the Julian calendar. Thus these churches celebrate the Nativity on the same day that Western Christians do, 25 December Gregorian until 2799. The Orthodox Churches of Jerusalem, Russia, Serbia, Montenegro, Poland from 15 June 2014, Macedonia, Georgia, Ukraine, and the Greek Old Calendarists and other groups continue to use the Julian calendar, thus they celebrate the Nativity on 25 December Julian which is 7 January Gregorian until 2100. The Russian Orthodox Church has some parishes in the West which celebrate the Nativity on 25 December Gregorian until 2799. Parishes of the Orthodox Church in America Bulgarian Diocese, both before and after the 1976 transfer of that diocese from the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia to the Orthodox Church in America, were permitted to use this date. Some old calendarist groups which stand in opposition to the state churches of their homelands will use the Great Feast of the Theophany the 6th of January Julian, the 19th of January Gregorian as a day for religious processions and the Great Blessing of Waters, to publicize their cause. Easter date in Eastern Orthodoxy most branches of the Eastern Orthodox Church use the Julian calendar for calculating the date of Easter, upon which the timing of all the other movable feasts depends. Some such churches have adopted the revised Julian calendar for the observance of fixed feasts, while such Orthodox churches retain the Julian calendar for all purposes. Topic. Oriental Orthodox usage Topic. The Oriental Orthodox churches generally use the local calendar of their homelands. However, when calculating the Nativity Feast, most observe the Julian calendar. This was traditionally for the sake of unity throughout Christendom. In the West, some Oriental Orthodox churches either use the Gregorian calendar or are permitted to observe the Nativity according to it. The Armenian Apostolic Orthodox Church celebrates the Nativity as part of the Feast of Theophany according to its traditional calendar. Usage by the Berbers The Julian calendar is still used by the Berbers of the Maghreb in the form of the Berber calendar. See also Byzantine calendar 
Conversion between Julian and Gregorian calendars Julian day Julian year astronomy List of adoption dates of the Gregorian calendar per country Mixed style date Proleptic Gregorian calendar Proleptic Julian calendar Revised Julian calendar Roman timekeeping Week Topic. Explanatory notes Topic. Topic. Citation notes Topic. Topic. Bibliography Topic. Bonnie Blackburn and Leo Frank Holford Strevens, The Oxford Companion to the Year, Oxford University Press, reprinted with corrections 2003. Brinda Moore, Pierre. 1983. Le Calendrier Romain, Recherches Chronologiques. Ottawa University Press. Ethiopian Time. Washington, D.C., Embassy of Ethiopia, 2008. Feeney, Dennis. 2007. Caesar's Calendar, Ancient Time and the Beginnings of History. Berkeley, University of California Press. Rupka, Jorg. The Roman Calendar from Numa to Constantine, Time, History and the Fasti. Wiley. Nautical Almanac Offices of the United Kingdom and the United States of America 1961. Explanatory Supplement to the Astronomical Ephemeris and the American Ephemeris and Nautical Almanac. London, Her Majesty's Stationery Office. Richards, E. G. Mapping Time, The Calendar and Its History. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-286205-1. Richards, E. G. Urban, Sean E., Seidelman, P. Kenneth, E. D. S. Explanatory Supplement to the Astronomical Almanac 3rd ed. Mill Valley, Calif., University Science Books. ISBN 978-1-891389-85-6. Stern, Sasha 2012. Calendars in Antiquity, Empires, States and Societies. Oxford University Press. Walker, John 2009. Calendar Converter. Topic. External links. Topic. Calendars through the ages on web exhibits. Calendar FAQ. Roman dates. The Roman calendar. Calendar converter converts between several calendars, for example Gregorian, Julian, Mayan, Persian, Hebrew. <laughs>